All right, y'all, before I bring on my guest, let me tell you a little bit about this powerhouse. She hails from Stone Mountain, Georgia, is an acclaimed actress, writer, producer, poet, activist, and proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. She, okay. <laughs> she was one of 10 Sundance breakout stars designated by The Wrap in 2015, and she hasn't looked back since. She is currently starring in the new and final season of John Singleton's hit show, Snowfall on FX. It is my pleasure to welcome to the Reese Coburg Show, Gail Bean. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So for my Reese Colbert audience folks, I ran into you um, during Congressional Black Caucus weekend. Yes, in D.C. Yes, in D.C. And my show wasn't announced at the time. I knew it was in the works. And so I told you, I was like, I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm coming out with the show. I'd love to have you on. And you said that you will come on. Mm -hmm. So I want everybody to know, if you didn't already know, she is definitely a woman of her word. Okay. So I am so excited that you're here today. Yeah. Let them know just in case. Cause I know, you know, with Snowfall, a lot of people have been thinking I'm disloyal since I gave away the recipe. They haven't <laughs> forgave me, but they need to know okay. Wanda and Gail both are loyal. Period. Period. And when, uh, why are you bringing up old stuff about the recipe? That's water under the bridge. Okay. <laughs> they got Louis and, and Franklin stealing from each other. So I think Wanda, what she did was very, very minor in comparison, okay? <laughs> but listen, I know you're doing a lot of promo for Snowfall, but I kind of want to go a different tack because I was reading about you. I do my research and um, I read about you having your own production company. Yeah. So I want to start there. Tell us about this production company and how it came about. Okay. So I went to school for accounting. I have my accounting degree. Uh -huh. And I said, well, what am I going to? I knew I wanted to do media film production and be an actress and a writer and a producer. So how can I make my accounting degree make sense? Uh -huh. So I said, okay, I can learn. You know, in the beginning, when you first start something, when you're an entrepreneur, you are all titles. You are the bookkeeper. You are the accountant. You are the right. finance financial advisor. But then you're also the one out there in the field. So hmm. you may be the correspondent. You may, depends if you how early in your stage you're going, you may also be the camera person. Hmm. So I said, okay, well, my accounting degree can come into fold with owning my own production company. Okay. So then I went to school for media film production. I learned the ground and the foundation and honed my skills to where I could get it to a level to actually give me experience and start me off in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I know I want to one day have my own production company and have kind of like a own, how Oprah has her own network. Yeah, yeah. Because back in the day when I was coming up, there was something for a, like, like, Shows had their time slots, right? Mm -hmm. Before I went to school in the morning, there would be some good, very educational kids shows on that were yeah. like friendly. And then, you know, you go to school, there's things that are the news and things that are on during the day. My grandmother used to watch the stories when we would go to school and stuff. Uh huh. Then you come home from school, all these things like one on one and, and different, really good shows that kids could watch once they come home from school. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have things that, after six where there are family shows and you have your Martins and you have your yeah. Prince of Bel Airs and all of these really amazing Moesha family shows that come on from after school to the evening mm -hmm. to the nighttime and then when the kids go to bed you have the uncut or the after dark or the shows that the adults are watching right 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 yeah. like snowball <laughs> yeah like snowball yeah so I aspire to have and still do to have my own production company, but also my own network one day. Mm, yeah. So that's how it came about. I knew I wanted to create some of my own things. So I said, okay, I have to have my own production company. So then I could fund it. And there are so many amazing, talented creatives out there that don't have represent representatives to be able to book them the job to direct on Snowfall or to write on a show like P-Valley or whatever the case yeah. may be. So I wanted to also be that avenue and that house to be able to get these people some good jobs and give them the exposure that they need. Mm -hmm. So that's how it came about. I love that. And, you know, I mean, in this day and age now, it's 
you it, being untraditional is like a gift. It could be a little bit of a curse, but I think of it's more of a gift because nowadays people want you to come to the table with like a crap ton of followers, very established. And I'm thinking, okay, well, what are you gonna do for me? If I'm already bringing the whole meal to the table, you're supposed to be helping me out. Exactly. Like, yeah. how, how are you giving me? Because, and I think um, I was just talking to Katoria the other day. I had a, a talk that I moderated with Stars and Lionsgate between her. Um, it was called Conversations That Matter. Yeah. And there was a survey that Think Tank for Inclusion and Equity did, and it was 876 people. And they saw that 81% of upper level white creatives mm. are granted opportunities with, it, with no experience. Mm. it's a small minute numbers who especially in the black community we may have the experience and still not be a- awarded that opportunity to grow or rise in a level so that as well is to allow people who may come in as a writer but also want to direct but maybe they're writing on big shows but they're not granted the opportunity to okay become a, a showrunner or right. be an executive producer or a producer or even have the opportunity to direct, even if they come with experience where they've directed their own independent film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they're so quick to pigeonhole us and 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 say, well, we know that you've proven yourself in this and they want to make that box very narrow. Now, they don't make it that narrow for nobody else, but for us, it's like the smallest box that can put us in and be like, okay, check that one, but you got all these other boxes to check, you know? So, you know, but... um. You, 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 you talk the when I think about, you know, being pigeonholed and things like that, I, I think about how you've really flipped some of this ways that they pigeonhole particular stories. I, I, I mean, I, I want to put it that way. Um, one thing I always try to push back on is respectability politics and, and the way that people really try to dehumanize and and not black women in particular down a peg, depending on their circumstances, their life circumstances between, it could be their looks. It could cool. be being a mom, a single mom. That's really the, the main ones that go after, you know, it could be your sexual politics, your sexual history. It could be any number of things where they try to start knocking us down a peg. And one thing I really, really, really appreciate about your catalog is how you've taken characters that some people kind of turn their nose up at a little bit. You know, when they do the interviews, they're like, don't send me this character, don't send me that character. And of course they have agency, they can do that. But I feel like you've taken characters that others have shunned and you have brought such humanity and such depth to them and really showed so much range. So I want to talk a little bit about Wanda. Okay. That is, I mean, she's iconic. I mean, she's iconic because she has the memes and stuff like that. But beyond <laughs> the social media aspect of it, yeah. um, she made her debut on uh, Snowfall. She wasn't on the first two episodes. And I have been just blown away when I think back to season two, when she, you know, entered the, the, the Snowfall series to now. I don't know if I could think of too many Black women characters that have seen such a massive arc, you know, and just gone through everything. What part of it, I mean, do you have a part of it that feels especially special to you now looking back on the whole series? Or is there a part that you enjoyed a little bit more like from her struggle with addiction to now I feel like her triumphant return, you know, um, going to the motherland and all that good stuff. Is there anything that really like, it was like this part was special that I played with her. Yes. Um, I love all of Wanda's journey. I'm not mm-hmm. going to lie. It it was so rich of yes. a character and a storyline. It's the role that actors dream of, right? And some go their entire lives and never receive. Mm-hmm. So I'm blessed for all of it. I have moments of Wanda that I love, which are my favorite parts in regards to the comedic relief. Oh, where- yeah. <laughs> you know, you just can't help but love her. And then I have moments where it's the heartbreak and the throes and the struggle with addiction, but we see her resilience and mm-hmm. it shines light on the strength of Black women in America. Well, all mm-hmm. over, but especially in America. Um, I think the part that I'm most proud to play is the part that where she's actually a full-blown addict mm-hmm. because that was something where... I got to to really delve deep into the mentality and the space of people whom even I used to judge. Yeah. You know, so I was able to to 
empathize myself, Gail, with Wanda and other people who I've witnessed that battle addiction or, you know, whether they're in my life firsthand or if it's secondhand, I, I volunteer and give back on Skid Row, but also I've had family members who have been unfortunate victims of drugs. Mm -hmm. So playing that depth of her, playing that part of her, her life story gave me an insight and a perspective from a different vantage point that I've never had before. Right. So I'm right. very appreciative of that because I also was able to allow other people to empathize with her and not just look it, it's so easily do these characters become caricatures, right? Yes, yes. If they're not approached with the right vulnerability, if they're not mm -hmm. approached with the right openness and a lack of judgment. Mm -hmm. So I was able to take myself out and look at Wanda from the inside. Yes. So for for me something where I had to just accept the challenge and be willing to dive deep. And I'm, I'm honored to be able to go so far into someone's life, a piece that I don't know mm -hmm. and be able to come out changed as well. Yeah. And you know, that you committed, you know, and I, I feel like you had to really not have an ego about it because Correct. they had Wanda down bad. <laughs> they had the teeth yeah. jacked up, hair, everything. Girl, <laughs> so that teeth was a the pro the makeup, the glam process of getting into Wanda every day mm -hmm. was intense. Even do you ever eat spinach and it kind of le leaves or something that leaves like yeah. a little film on your teeth? Uh -huh. on your teeth. That's how it felt. Like I could literally rub my tongue across my teeth and feel every single nasty nook. Mm. Um, even when I would look at myself in the mirror and it's just like wow yeah. like wow yeah so. were you able to compartmentalize that though because I wonder like you know when you see these images of you out there and it's not you it's your character but you know as black women we get attacked for everything all the time particularly our looks did that how were you able to deal with that part I'm wondering okay I'm not going to lie as girl it's pretty obvious. I got big lips. Uh, <laughs> so growing up, yeah, I already had to deal with images that I didn't like of myself, you know? Yeah. So now as in adulthood, I'm still coming into my lips, but I'm comfortable with images that may not show me in the most flattering way. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, uh, it's going to be an image out there of me that doesn't look great. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, it wasn't hard for me to, I was able to leave that on set. And when I okay. see the memes and I see the pictures, I'm okay with that because this is still also my, this is Wanda's truth. So mm. I play that character and I, I love her. Yeah. So I was able to compartmentalize and not take it home. Now, when I do watch it, I'm not going to lie. It, it hits deep mm. because I'm like with the rest of the audience, like I feel right there in it. I mm -hmm. empathize in those moments when I'm watching it. And then it's it means something different to me now having played it and having family members who I've seen gone through it. I, I feel for them. Yeah. Like I feel for them in, on another level. So yeah, the images didn't bother me. The memes don't bother me. I laugh at them. I think they're funny as well. Okay. Um, but early on, I had to get comfortable with, with seeing images of me that I was not the most proud of right right well girl you're better than me because i'm like i'll take a selfie i got one angle i got i'm <laughs> like no <laughs> girl, but like, every girl. angle is gorgeous so no well like, thank you for that thank you for that <laughs> but you know um now we see uh wanda really in her fullness i think i mean she's always been full and i think she's always had depth to her but this season, we see a different Wanda. What did what does that mean for you and like for Wanda's character to really just be almost triumphant? And I don't know what's gonna happen. She might go back down and do some other stuff. But I mean, the introduction to her this season just felt very triumphant for her. How did how did you feel about that? Um, so it has been. You know, Wanda is a wife now. Yes. So this, you know, I I felt really good being able to. See her come full circle mm -hmm. to someone else, to a newfound Wanda. I think some people, you know, felt like she should have died and others were very happy. But what I am most grateful for is there are so many addicts that have reached out and said that is their story. There mm -hmm. are so many people, even within the production that I've met 
who they're like, yeah, I'm 17 years clean. Mm. Or like, I get so emotional watching or doing this because that is my story. Yeah. So I felt good and happened. I as well have been rooting for Wanda. Yeah. There are people I've seen like on social media where it says they have been keeping count like two episodes clean. Come on, Wanda, we're rooting for you. Eight episodes clean. Oh, and wow. Like it's a march and they, it, I think it's just so amazing seeing people that invested in mm. her storyline and her and, and cheering her on and having that community that so many addicts don't get to have in right. life, you know? So yeah. I'm happy for her. I'm happy for where she's at. Yeah. Um, in regards to where she's going, I am at peace. Okay. Where she's going. Got it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm happy about it or not, though. I'm mm. still trying to process that. Mm. Okay. That's um, you're not gonna give away spoilers. I appreciate that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, one thing I think is very interesting um, about what Wanda shows is that you don't have to be weighed down by what you've been through and so often our society puts a person who has had addiction um in the discard pile and uh we see the love that you know leon has for her he's loved her through that and and she's loved him through that as well um but we see her really um it still probably is down deep there but we still see her kind of breaking free out of what she's been through and really having this this beautiful new life with Leon, as you said, as a wife. Mm -hmm. In contrast with your character that you play on P Valley, which is another iconic show. You are just on like the best shows to, to be on <laughs> on TV. Um, but you played roulette. And I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna front with you, okay? Because P Valley is my show. And you okay. were on there the first se season. So when I heard you was gonna be on there, I was like, we don't need no new characters on P-Valley. P-Valley is perfect as it is. I'm not going, I hadn't met you yet. I hadn't met you yet and I hadn't seen you on there yet. So I was just like, feel like a little territorial. But okay. you killed it on P-Valley. And mm. you're one of my favorite characters, but your character Roulette, she's very much weighed down by her past. I mean, she's dealing with the trauma of what she's been through. And we see her in this like, like kind of survival mode as opposed to Wanda we see her this season going into more trying to thrive mode how different is it the approach of trying to play some uh, trying to play a character who's really wounded and and fighting for her life in a different way than how Wanda was it is night and day I will mm. say something that one of my acting coaches Lelania Masters told me years years ago she said, you have, I want you to get comfortable in being uncomfortable, right? Mm. And she was referring to the vulnerability that we must give these characters in order to truly tell their stories and give it justice and truly allow others to go there with us. So for me, I knew with Roulette, I had to lend one, a lot of 18-year-old Gail. Mm. And I had to truly and genuinely just be free. Yeah. But also know that this character has a block. This character has a past that she is running from. Uh -huh. Not necessarily running from the past to the pole, because what we'll find out later is Roulette was a dancer back in Jackson. Uh -huh. Gymnast dancer. Like she has she has that that um very athletic background. Right. But it's not necessarily that she was running from the freedom of the pole, but more so the weight of what death will bring, what sometimes love will bring. Mm -hmm. And it it was it was difficult in a sense of, you know, we we hit on it briefly when we talk about, you know, death from police. Yeah. At the as unjustified murders at the hands of police. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Officers or people who we tend to who are supposed to protect us. Yeah. And so we touch on that when we hear about, you know, Roulette and she kind of mentions to Duffy how she lost her brother Michi mm -hmm. um, killed by police. And she speaks on the racial tension of how, you know, white people always get away with that. Right. I think it was beautiful because we see these characters naked, but we don't see them emotionally naked. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was different for me because with Wanda, Wanda is free and just doing whatever. And we see yeah. her vulnerability, we yeah. see her strength, we see her resilience. But to play a character 
who we see her physical strength, right? Right, oh, right. But we don't actually see the resilience in her inner strength of being a black woman in America. Uh-huh. Having a brother, because black women that are that are siblings and that are sisters to a brother, uh-huh. that's a different type of fear. That's a different type of weight that we carry around with us because our brothers are like our best friends. Uh-huh. Our brothers, yes, our fathers are, are our protectors, protectors, but our brothers are also our protectors. Yeah. From a, a different, it's a different viewpoint of being in this world as a black woman. Um, You know, they say the black woman is the least respected and protected. Right. You have a brother and I have five of them. Yeah. It was a very difficult role for me to play in the, the vulnerability of it because uh-huh. it's so close to home. When everything was going on through during the pandemic, I feared for my brothers. When I, when I first moved to LA, I watched Fruitvale Station. It came out. Right. Yeah. And being in the South and not having so social media wasn't really prevalent. I think at the time that that happened, uh-huh. I wasn't familiar with Oscar Grant or Fruitvale or any of that. Uh-huh. So, so Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan introduced me to that, that yeah. whole Oscar Grant story. I went, I did research. My dad at the time, I think was coaching for the Jets. They played the Raiders. So me and my best friend went down there and we rode the train once we got in. We rode the train down to the stadium. We made yeah. sure we stopped and took pictures at the Fruitvale Station. Mm. But I was so heartbroken uh-huh. by that story. And it's just to to step into the the heaviness of roulette, it was night and day. And it yeah. was just different. So there's a lot of fun. Yeah. But it's layered. Like roulette is layered because beneath all of that, we have the hurt of the heartbreak that she's never processed of her brother being killed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she has so many layers. I mean, she's powerful, she's defiant, but there's something kind of broken within her. She's not a broken person, but there's something in there that she's really fighting to keep to herself yeah. um, so that she's not vulnerable, but you still display that vulnerability in a way that's really powerful. So I appreciate the work that you do because when we talk about um, sex workers, when we talk about uh, uh, people who suffer from addiction, these are the castaways. Even within Black people, sometimes we're like, we don't need another show about Black people. That's not your experience. That's fine. You can't relate. That's fine. But, you know, it's about it's about these. These are all the people in our community and they're all worthy of humanity and getting their story told. I love how you do that. So my last question for you, I don't want to keep you too long, is, you know, you play these iconic characters or they're iconic now. And I have a sneaking suspicion based on my research that they're not like you that much. Like you're, you're quite different from your characters in many ways. What's the most like oddball, like just completely shocking thing that people would would never suspect based on your catalog, people that you play. That I'm shy. Wow, okay. I'm very, I do not like attention. I do not like, this is the thing. I could be in a room with everybody and speak to the whole room, have a good Mm -hmm. time, just be me. But then when people say, oh, when they realize who I am, then it's like, oh no. (laughs) It makes me shy. I'm very shy. And I play characters who are the farthest thing from shy. Uh-huh. Like, so I think that is like, you have Rashida from Insecure who is loud and boisterous and unapologetically mm-hmm. the black lawyer. You know, you have Roulette who's a dancer who's yeah. very unshy and comfortable with her body and just being seen. You have Wanda who just loves life and is the life of the party, a good time. Um, the character Nadine that I played in Atlanta, I mean- She's just fun, go along, right. surprised by life. But from all these different characters, none of them are shy. Right, definitely and, not. Yeah, at all. And I think that is the beauty and the evolution of playing characters that have so much differences. But the, the similarity in them is that they like, they don't mind being seen. Mm. For me, the most oddball thing is, I do mind. I am shy and it makes me nervous because when you're seen, then it's like, okay, now I don't want to let people down. Now I don't want to disappoint the black culture and the black race. And now I feel like I'm in the forefront. So I am the voice and I am the face of black people. 
and I feel obligated to represent. I love already representing, but now yeah. it's an obligation. And now when people see you, it's like, you're now second guessing every single thing. And it's, mm. I'm very shy. I'm very shy. I get oh. nervous. Well, you don't disappoint. You make us all proud. But let me just say, just my, I'm not, you didn't solicit my advice, but let me just say as a person who rejects any notion that I need to represent anything other than myself and people that rock with it, don't put that on yourself, girlfriend. Like you are Gail, fabulously Gail. And the people that rock with that, let them come. And people that don't, they can F off and be mad about it somewhere else in their own little island that don't affect you. So I'm rooting for you to keep thriving. You just have already an incredible catalog. You have your production company that you're getting off the ground. I know you're going to continue to do big things in the most authentic way that you can. So thank you so much for joining my show. Thank you so much for having me. Um, you are amazing and beautiful. And I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of you, you know, because we say things and we hope and we pray, but you put it into action. And now you have this amazing show. And I'm thank honored you. to be a guest on here. The honor is all mine, trust me. <laughs> so you have to come back whenever you have any projects. Or if you're just going to come and chat and, and kick it, then I'm cool with that too. So whatever wow. you want, girl, I'm here. I'll be back every time as an audience member because I will be watching and listening and I'll be back. Sure. Thank you. Bye, Thank Gail. Bye-bye.